queen's in there somewhere. We're gonna find her. When I shake them, there's gonna be bees everywhere. Jesus! Get away! <laughs> In this video, I'm going to be building a new beehive for my brother-in-law, John, who I had the pleasure of being a part of his first year beehive swarming into a tree and then rescuing. John started a YouTube channel called Homegrown Hobbies a few months ago and has several awesome detailed videos going over his experience as a first-time beekeeper. So please do me a favor, head over to his channel, give him a look, and subscribe to Homegrown Hobbies. A link is in the description. Okay, you see I have a few boards whipped to the right width to make some medium honey supers as well as my board for the deep hive body. And the reason I'm going with this pre-made set of plans, this standard long stroke beehive construction, is I'm going to be utilizing the prefab frames that you can buy. It just makes everything a lot simpler to use this design. It's tried and true, so we're going to go ahead and follow these instructions. The only thing we're not doing is using the shallow supers. We're going to be using two of the medium supers. These are just kind of add-ons to the top once you have your bee queen separator grid on top of the deep high body and this is like fully filled up they just keep building up and up and putting more honey into these supers so we've got these pieces right here at the right width for the supers this piece for the main hive body and i'm going to go ahead and cut these to the right length as it says here the only thing we're going to not do is do they show finger joints or box joints in the corners i'm just going to put a little bit of rabbit in the corner so that will change the dimensions slightly but it's going to be a lot simpler construction if you wanted you could really do this with just butt joints you don't even need the rabbit it'd be plenty strong with just glue and screws so let's cut these to length get started Okay, so now we gotta cut the short sides, which are going to fit into the rabbit, and the rabbit's gonna have a half inch of material on either side to account for thickness remaining. So I'm gonna take my 16 and a quarter inch overall length and subtract one inch from that. So 15 and a quarter, so we're gonna set the new stop block. So now we're at the router table and I have this three quarter inch flat bit set up and my fence set to the exact thickness of these boards. And the depth of this is set to leave a half inch of material and we're cutting away the remainder of that material because this material is slightly less than three quarters of an inch. Optimally, this would be a quarter inch depth cut here, but we're going off the half inch of material left over. So we're left with our perfect dimensions on the outside of the box. So I'm gonna take this, run one pass this way, flip it around, do a pass this way, the same thing on all the super panels as well, but most importantly, I'm making sure to use this backer board as I'm pushing through to avoid blowout at this end. And also this gives me a lot more control as this panel is gonna wanna rock like this, especially on those more narrow super boards. So this gives me a lot more control as I'm pushing behind like this. Let's go ahead and get all these rabbits cut. So once again, we're here at the router table with the three quarter inch flat bit still set up. And this time the fence is five eighths of an inch from front of the bit to the fence. And we're raised up three eighths of an inch, which is this little detail right here, which is the frame resting rabbit groove that's gonna be on both sides. This allows you to slide the frames back and forth and just drop them into place. So we're just gonna simply take our short boards and run them across one pass. This shouldn't be any trouble for this size router. Should handle this no problem. And again, we're gonna be using that backer board as we shove it through just to make sure there's no blowout on the end. So I have dry fitted together right now the main body of the beehive. You see we have our rabbit joints, which help make the box shape and make everything super easy for assembly. And we have our rabbit joints on the top. That's where the racks are gonna sit in for the honeycombs to develop. So all we're gonna do is apply glue to these joints right here, push it together, put our square inside and make sure everything is nice and square because there's not gonna be a top or bottom to kind of stop this from changing shape. All the structure is gonna come from these corner joints, so it has to be really strong. So the glue, we're gonna hold it in place with some inch and a half brad nails, and then I'm gonna come back and add a couple two inch screws in each corner, and that's gonna make this thing really solid. It's the same thing for the honey supers over there, just a little bit shorter.
So next I want to cut this three quarter inch piece of plywood for the bottom, but I'm noticing they have these dados along these three outer pieces and I can't really see a reason for that other than it just makes it easier to get this three eighths inch spacing on the top. So I'm thinking I'm just going to use a spacer and I'm just going to glue and use brad nails to hold this together. I know that's going to be way more than strong enough. What I've done is just wrote down the dimensions minus the three quarters in the back in this direction and then minus the inch and a half in this direction, which is the thickness of the two outer pieces and then the thickness of the back piece over here. And I'm just going to cut it to those dimensions and then glue and brad nail the sides on and easy peasy. Avoid all this extra data work for nothing. Okay, onto the base, and you see I have my two boards clearly oversized. These boards are going to go along the side, and they will get cut to exact length because the back board will go from the outer width of these two boards, so we'll cut that to size once these are attached. And you see underneath, when I'm attaching these sides, I have three pieces of eighth inch hardboard. That's my spacer for this three eighths inch gap that has to be left. And again, we didn't make any dados in here, so the size of this, the width width here is the exact width of our boxes above, so everything rests on these rails. And this is our little entrance way over here. So we'll cut these to length, glue them, brad nail them, and then cut this back piece. Same thing. And that's it for the base. So next I'm going to be putting together the outer cover or lid for the beehive and the dimensions of this rectangle are 20 and a quarter by 16 and 5 eighths and this is 3 quarter inch construction grade plywood. You can use whatever you want for this as far as I can tell because it's going to get a piece of sheet metal bent over top of it to really protect it. So all we need to do is cut to length these pieces and they are 2 and a quarter inch wide and the thickness of them is around half inch just because I didn't have any 3 quarter inch material left over it really doesn't matter. Matter. This is just so the lid won't go flying off or sliding off. So let's go ahead and cut these to length and same procedure, just glue along the edge, brad nail, and it's good to go. So back here at the router table, I have my three quarter inch flat bit set up and some stock cut to final width, length, and thickness to five eighths of an inch. The five eighths of an inch is called specifically for the inner lid and the plans call for box joints again. I chose to raise the router bit to half thickness and cut half lap joints for all ends of the boards, which will be more than strong enough for this. I have my fence set away from the front of the bit by the width of the stock to establish my inner wall. I'm also making sure to use a push block from behind to reduce blowout and help guide the cut. Then I just run the remainder of the material over the bit again and again until all the material is removed from the joint. The dry fit looks good. I'm going to go ahead and put glue in each of these corners and hold it together with some spring clamps. And I'm going to use my big square to make sure this stays perfectly square as the glue sets. Okay, I've changed my mind. That sucked. I'm going to go ahead and fire in some me nails to keep it in place. So the frame is all glued together. It's super strong. Those half lap joints there. Now at the rotor table, I have my rabbiting bit set up and it's going to cut about two thirds of the way into the thickness of this. That way our quarter inch material can sit into that groove and get glued into place. I will measure and cut that quarter inch thick material after this is cut so I can get exact measurements off this. And this is going to leave us with a rounded corner. I'm not going to go ahead and square this up. I'm simply just going to sand away the edges and make it fit in to this. It's a lot easier that way, saves myself from any kind of chisel work. Let's get this rabbit cut. So 
So I've got an inch and a quarter Forstner bit here and I've got my two locations marked with a center punch. So I'm gonna drill this out and then finish up the elongated hole with my jigsaw. And then right after that, I'm gonna round off these corners at the belt sander and that'll allow it to fit perfectly in here with our nice cutout in the middle. So the plans call out for two handles on either side that basically span the entire length of the box. But what I'm gonna do is take a bunch of my scraps here because I don't really have any more material, so I gotta use scraps. And I'm just gonna cut a bevel on one side that makes it a little bit easier to grab underneath. And I'm gonna cut about eight inches in length and put one handle on each side because I'm really not sure what side I'm gonna need the handles on. So I can't really commit to just one pair of sides. I want it on each side, more or less for convenience. But anyways, so we're gonna cut a bevel here and then glue and nail these on and that should be more than enough to keep these handles on forever. So the last thing to do is to install the handle on all four sides of the three supers and the main body. And I've just created this quick little jig. It's got a little stop on the top and the side. Just align it with the top left corner. Put this here, put some glue on the back, drive in some brad nails, good to go. Now on the short side of all of these, you'll notice this is not gonna be in the center. So I'm just gonna have to modify this, cut a little bit off, reinstall this stop, and then it'll be a little more centered. That's it, let's get to it. Okay, there it is. The only thing left to do is to take some wood filler, fill all these nail holes and screw holes, give it a nice sanding, get a coat of primer on it. So as you see, everything was primed on the outside, nothing on the inside. However, the tops and bottoms are going to be painted. So now I'm just gonna get my top coat on, which is this green color. And you just want some kind of color that's very light. White is a traditional color, but this one's gonna be green for a little bit of fun. You just don't want it to paint it a black color or a very dark color because it will attract the sun and your bees could overheat and swarm on you or possibly die. So any kind of light color is good. Let's finish this up. Another reason why I wanted to switch out these hives is because I didn't do a very good job of building this one and the walls were too tight together so it was hard to get these frames in. So with the new box Brad had actually done a very nice job of getting the proper spacing done. All right so this one here we do have cap brood in here. There's honey along the top the lighter colored down inside is cap brood. New inner cover. Give them a lid. As John shows us what the complete hive looks like, a reminder to head over to his channel and hit the subscribe button. See you on the next one.